You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Well... Good evening, everybody. You no, know, you're not. You're not hearing things. It's not Wednesday. You've not missed two days of work or three days of work, I suppose it could be. And suddenly I'm here. Yes, it's Penny, normally of Haunted Histories, but we've actually got a bit of a special for you tonight. Now, my guest. Well, what can I say about my guest? Oh, she's an absolutely beautiful lady. I love her to pieces. And in fact, I was lucky enough to have a good long chat and coffee with her and make a fuss of her dog the other week who is bonkersly beautiful as well she's she was in the daily mail article with me uh, earlier this year talking about female ghostbusters cringe of that term but the female ghostbusters she was also on good morning britain with our fellow parasearch presenter jolene earlier in the year as well she happens to run the most successful paranormal events company in the UK and has been running it since 2007 she is the force to be reckoned with that is the one the only Hazel Ford (laughs) how do you like that intro love oh my god Penny (laughs) (laughs) are you blushing now oh just a bit yeah you can't see a mirror (laughs) It's true. It's true, though. Yeah, some of it's true. I mean, we did we did do the Good Morning Britain, which was brilliant, wasn't and it? And we did the Daily Mail together. And the Daily Mail, yeah. That, and I mean, you that are was a all... force to be reckoned with. Well, we all are, aren't we? All of us women in this field are really um, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, but you're you're one I seriously wouldn't. I I, I am I am one. I am very pleased that I have your personal mobile number. Put it that way. Oh, thank you. I'm pleased I've got yours as well. <laughs> So what have you been up to on this fine Sunday? Um, well, actually, I've spent most of it in A&E. Um, I A&E. Oh, the, what? Um, to cut a long story very short, I had uh, I had a routine appointment at the, the opticians this morning and um, ended up at the eye casualty with, um, they think it's, it might be a detached retina or something. I don't know until Tuesday exactly what's going on, but... Yeah, that was my day, and I was really annoyed because I had so much to do today. As well as talking but, to me. Yeah, well, you know, when you've got so much to do, and you've got it all planned in your head, and the opticians was a, was a sort of a bit that I didn't want to do, yeah. and then to find myself there. But uh, I'm glad I went because I've got oh, to get it sorted. You do need to get that sorted. It's mm. not good. It's. I don't not want good. you turning up. I don't want you turning up at my house, dragging me out. <laughs> <laughs> as previously threatened <laughs> I, I told I, I told Hazel that if she doesn't go and get it sorted this week even though we're both saying we don't like having our eyes sort of touched and Ooh. all that oh. malarkey that if she chickens out of doing it I'm actually driving up to Nottinghamshire I am finding her house I even though she's quite a bit taller than me I'm quite strong and I will be bundling her into the boot of my car and driving <laughs> her to the hospital to get it done I think she knows I mean it yeah, I'll be there. I've got well, I'm going to go anyway. So um, just to see what's what's going on because I don't want to go blind, obviously. Not a good idea. No, I, I've got I w- time. I will be contacting the office to make sure that you're doing <laughs> it. You do realise that? Oh my god! I mean, well, you can't really because I'm not going to tell them in the office. Oh, they'll probably hear it on the radio. Your yeah, daughter you can will contact know. The office. Surely your daughter <laughs> well, will I know. I haven't seen her, so um, no, she might not. She's going away. Actually, she's going to Greece, so no, she probably won't. I'm not going to bother Ford her anyway. Will know. Yeah, he'll know because he has to do all the driving. Exactly, I'll I'll speak to him. I have my ways, Hazel, I have my ways. (laughs) I'm just going to tell him not to give me your number. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you think that'll stop me, girl? You think Mm. that'd stop me? Well, we've we've already got people in the chat room. Uh, Richard Clements is in there. Pamela Pamela from the Spooky Sisters, who did the wonderful show with me on Wednesday about the Hellfire Club in in Dublin. Um, And Kerry's in there as well although she's masquerading as parasearch radio she's just had to put it's me kerry by the way hi kerry so yeah we're, we've got people in the chat room already um cool don't don't, don't forget guys this is live like 100 percent live so if you do have any questions for our hazel please do put them 
in the chat room and I will put them to her for you. Um, anything about sort of running a successful event company and all of that kind of thing, I'm sure she'd be more than happy to answer. Absolutely. I'm answering anything for her on that one, but, you know. Yeah, no, obviously anything at all. I mean, you know, it's a, if anything, it's a transparent company, isn't it? Mm, very. <laughs> see everything. Very. Well, the thing is, I mean, the amount of times you, you, I see on Facebook that you've been having a long chat with another f- sort of woman in the industry, and it does tend mm-hmm. to be the women in the industry, um, yeah. people like MJ, Sam Bennett, you know, me, and yeah, and it's another friend like, today, actually. Another long-lost um, friend in the industry today. It was yeah. lovely to catch up with her as well. But the thing is, the thing I always get from that is how giving you are, how happy you are to sort of impart your knowledge. Um, there's no sort of, well, I've done it, I'm not telling you how to do it with you. No, and I think that's one of the not really, at all. really amazing things about you, Hazel. Well, to be honest, I do believe that this industry is huge and it's there's enough I mean there are thousands of locations aren't there There and millions of people that all really want to do it and one company can't supply all those people Mm. so the more companies out there that can supply everybody that wants to do it and go to even more locations that are haunted the better Mm. so you know it's definitely something that that anyone that wants to do this it's definitely a great thing to do Mm. Um, I suppose, you know, and I'm not being patronised as long as it's done properly, you know, yeah, and people so. are given what they pay for. That's the most important thing. And most of the people that I do speak to really want to do that. Mm. They want to give people what, what, what they pay for. Yeah. Well, I mean, with me, it's you've been very much a cheerleader for me, as I've felt, even though I don't run an events company. Obviously, I'm a podcaster, I'm an investigator, I'm a writer. But you've always said to me, if there's anything I can do to help just shout and mm-hmm. and and now that's really sort of um uh vicky foster hornsby has just said yeah, hi boss lady team, actually. Oh, hi, vicky. <laughs> hi, vicky. hi vicky whereabouts is vicky based where does she tend to cover she's in birmingham she's a brum she's the brummy yeah, she's a brummy ah. she's lovely she's absolutely lovely well is it steel steel lane steel ha- steel house lane steel house, yeah that's, that's, what, that's on my to-do list to do so oh is it oh you need oh, to come and do that one then yeah well, i think so we're, there. we're there soon actually i think we're there yeah, this I month i can't do anything oh no else October, this month. i think we're there i can't there. do anything else this year don't you remember my schedule i gave oh, you when God, i last yeah. saw you yeah no <laughs> Like next me, year really. I'm looking at now next year <laughs> and Caroline Caroline Holland yeah that's another one of my team hi Caroline oh, got all the team <laughs> she's in. well yeah. trained no, they're lovely honestly they're the best best thing ever <laughs> but what I was going to say is you, you always said to me anything I can do to help anything you want me to push for you anything you know if I can get you into a venue I mean that's one thing that we've talked about a lot isn't it sort of venues that without sounding like I'm using you I need your influence to get us into so that we can make a brilliant event yeah for the public another thing with venues as well I mean venues they get um, they get a lot of paranormal companies coming into them and um, obviously you know that they, they like to look after their venues and mm. make sure that the right people are coming in and when they get messed about it really impacts on other, other paranormal yeah. companies so you know it's it, but if I can get if I can get my relationship with a venue, if I get a good relationship with a venue, then you know that's how it stays until that relationship changes hands, which is really frustrating because mm. once they change hands, you've got to build up the relationship yeah. again. Um, but you know, normally we've got fantastic relationships with all of our venues, and um, you know they're happy to let us do most things mm. of you know what we'd like to do as long as we're respecting what what their venue's there for and how we use it. They really don't mind. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they let us in early, or I can have it during the day sometimes. It's just, they're just brilliant, all yeah. of them. Yeah. But then it's, like you say, it's because you respect the fact they're trying to, to, to maintain these a lot of these amazing historical um, places. And, you know, do, doing the paranormal stuff in them does help to fund a lot of these Absolutely. museums that are charitable museums at the end of the day. They need this mm, income. Definitely. And the last thing we need is 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 dickheads lighting candles I mean, we, on wooden surfaces and all that kind absolutely. of malarkey absolutely but i mean we've got into a lot of the english heritage sites now and that's mm. been so hard to get into those sites mm. because you know that they're, they're i suppose they don't particularly need our money 
but now they probably do you know mm. at one point they didn't but now they probably do need it more but um but it, that goes around by word of mouth so mm. you know you go to one english heritage site they've got they've got relationships with near neighboring mm. english heritage and it works its way around so mm. yeah we've we've been invited to quite a few more actually Good. so which i'll be going to have a look at but um yeah and uh, national trust as well i think you know there's there's another company that's managed to get into a national trust site which is a fantastic feat you know and i'm really proud it's of them doing trust that it is, yeah. yeah no it's um i think it, i can mention it's chris chris chow oh chris yeah yeah offering so, chris yeah yeah so you know for him to do that it's, it's really good you know it's, it just shows that this is getting bigger and better yeah for and National Trust, definitely, because I know National Trust. I mean, my my I, I, my cousin works for the National Trust, and I've often questioned him about you know doing an event at his place, and he's like, I can't. They will not let us. They do don't no. fund. They don't put in the budget to have a I member know. of staff there who's a key holder after hours. That's, they just don't see. It. And he said, we have all said to them, look, you can make six, seven hundred quid a night doing some yeah. of the big, you know, the big, the big houses and the big halls. And I mean, he used to work at Dunster Castle. And he was saying the man, money that they could make from there, and he said, but they just don't. Is it at the mm. moment, the management don't think it's a um, feasible uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I totally, I'd, I've had that for so many, so many years from English Heritage, but now we've, you know, we've managed to get into some of the sites, mm. and um, you know, it's it's phenomenal. I'm mm. really, I'm really excited about the the future with that because there are so many. There are literally hundreds of sites. I'm excited about the one you and I have talked about quite a bit. Yes, I'd love to get in there really quickly, actually. We must go down there and talk mm. and get that date. Mm, definitely, definitely, because I've told the husband that even if he's away or something and that's happening, I don't care. I'm going. <laughs> bringing, the boy, bringing the kids with you. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to, if I have to. I mean, let's face it, Will was telling my old... Hazel got to meet my kids over the summer holidays. <laughs> Poor thing. And um, I know Will was giving you some historical information as, on workhouses, wasn't he? And all yeah, that kind of definitely. thing. But, and um, yeah, he's, he's actually quite boys. interested. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, you wouldn't no, have said that today to if you'd seen them. Oh, they're naughty. Um, <laughs> oh. Well, we we have got more paranormal royalty in the chat room. Would you believe? Oh, Jess Gladwin's in there. Oh, hi, Jess. Jess and just till dawn. It she is, is, and you're also S- SJ, Sarah, Sarah yes, Jane, SJ. SJ. Yep, and we've she, got um, she's a guest stroke team member. And we've got an Alex Hornsby's in there, and they're all having Alex, a little yep. private conversation. Right, Pamela has <laughs> asked me. Pamela is a dog person, and she has asked me what kind of dog do you have? Now he's a poodle cross. We don't know, honest to goodness. We do not know. If you go he's on my Facebook page, something. you'll see the latest photo of him. But he's he kind of between Labrador and Spaniel size, isn't he, height-wise? With, yeah, yeah, he's just a weird dog. He's so weird. We, When I took him to the vet, the vet thought he had some sort of lurcher in him, but I can't see that, but he's fast as a as a whippet. He mm. looks like a bit like a poodle. He's definitely with, poodle with that coat. He's definitely yeah. got poodle with him because he doesn't molt, does he? No, but he is absolutely adorable. I mean, we we, we got him by accident, yeah. and you know he's now living with us and rolling a roost, and he, we just love him so much. But he's so funny. He just yeah, makes him, us laugh. Him and I bonded quite quickly, didn't we? He wouldn't yeah, leave, he wouldn't leave me alone when I came <laughs> to visit, and he also bonded with my sons. And um, yeah, I, and my and older one has offered to walk him next time we go up to Nottinghamshire for Hazel. So definitely. Yeah. But the thing is, he he's not food orientated so he doesn't no, do not, anything for food so yeah. every time he does sort of spend time with people it's because he actually wants to because he doesn't want anything from them there's no food around that he wants mm. to eat I mean, we have to force feed him most of the time with fresh yeah. chicken and ham and god he looks like a king he is gorgeous he is a yeah he is he's beautiful he is uh, it just made me laugh how sort of i'd be te- okay, come here come here and he'd come straight over i thought that was quite funny <laughs> So I've got more control over him than I've over my own children. Yeah, well, I know. I always find that phenomenon really weird when he when he actually does as he's told. It's like, oh, well, I'm not to say it twice. <laughs> this is really good. But yes, Pamela, he <laughs> is adorable. But he's definitely got poodle in him. Definitely got mm. poodle in him somewhere. He's got uh, little but, white socks for yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is a sweetie. He is a sweetie. Um, I, I, I'm surprised that Will didn't try and kidnap him. I think actually, as you drove off, he said, "Could we not take him home?" And I was like, "I think Aww. Hazel might miss him." <laughs> I know he was and Tom, to take Tom, him off, Tom was like, "I want him! I want him! I want him!" But anyway, <laughs> so 
you know, so we've got all these new places that you're looking at. I mean, like you're not mm-hmm. busy enough as it is. On on this Friday the thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Now I know a lot of your incredible team are in the chat room. Yeah. How many events was it you had running concurrently on Friday um, the thirteenth? We had nineteen on Friday the thirteenth. Nineteen um, but events. But twenty four, twenty five. I can't remember. Twenty three. Well, twenty five. Say twenty four over all over the weekend. No, twenty five actually over the weekend. So we've just finished one. Wow. Just finishing one now, and then we've got another one starting at ten, and then that's it. Was that Draco? For the weekend. Uh, Draco should just be finishing in a little while, and then East Drive starts at 10 o'clock. So wow. once East Drive's in, then that's it. I can actually breathe a sigh of relief. Because when the events are running, you just don't switch off mm. at all. You, even, you know, you wait for them to start, you wait for your guests to get there. And we had 600 guests on Friday. Wow. So probably 700 over the whole weekend. And it's a lot of people to manage and get into those locations safely. And you know what? Friday was the, one of the best nights on the phone, to be fair. Yeah. You know, I, I, it, I thought it was going to be absolutely manic, but it was really good. You know, but you, you don't micromanage your teams, though, do you? No. Basically, they're, once they've got into their... They, we have um, an admin portal for them. And once they're in their admin portal, they then get to manage their guests. And we pick up the guests that are lost do you know what mm. I mean so the guests that are lost might phone our mobile but apart from that they they look after all their guests themselves once they've got that guest list mm. so do you ever do the investigations with them just to see what it's what it's like and almost do yeah, a I mean, mystery I shopper do, I, almost no I used to do I used to do them every weekend twice a weekend for the first five years probably I was out every weekend without fail you know was, I was travelling hundreds of miles I, I remember doing um, Nottingham all the way to the Edinburgh Vaults I left at sort of nine o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. got to Edinburgh Vaults the event started at midnight finished at 6am got in the car and drove all the way home again and you know and, and I, I could do it in those days but I'm getting really old now <laughs> and i just find it so difficult to to stay up all night and yeah. to actually do the event and and because there's so much going on behind the scenes on the admin side of it all it's really hard to marry that up with the, mm. with the investigations themselves now i find it i'm always so worried or i'll look at guests by email names you know and i'll think oh you're you're um, so and so at so and so aren't you dot com and, and all this sort of stuff it's really weird so and my team are much better at it than I am as well you know they're really good at what they do and I'm not as good as them and I really recognize that now and it's because I'm so busy on the admin side and I think that's you know that that side of things has changed me a lot yeah yeah. As the company's grown, it's made it even even bigger and, and worse on that respect. I love going out with the team. If we ever go to p- sort of private stuff, I love that. You know, if, if I haven't got to look after anybody or worry about somebody, then, you know, it's really nice. But I'm not saying it's not nice working with guests, but it's a different, completely different um, ball game. Yeah. And can I just say, any, any sceptics listening who basically are saying, yeah, she's only saying that because she's on air and the team are listening... Mm. Hazel pays her team <laughs> I, I'm going to say this Hazel will pay her team the same compliments when her and I are just chatting as friends it's not it's not something that she just does because she's on air and she knows some of her team are in the chat <laughs> kill me tomorrow <laughs> um, Katrina your BFF yeah, is there yeah. hi Katrina <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I'm not seeing all your names coming up and mentioning them it's it's flying through the chat room quite quite quickly and obviously I want to I want to keep um keep our hazel talking but so if i do miss your name i am very very sorry that i haven't shouted it out but if you do have any questions for hazel do put them in the chat room and i will ask them or make a note as i'm see it flick up and i will ask them but i do i did want to just stress that that, that hazel isn't saying this great stuff because she's on air she says this to me frequently when we're just chatting chatting privately so if someone wanted to come and work for you though Mm -hmm. hazel how would they go about it um, well, most of my team are guests, ex-guests. They're not, I mean, we don't get very many that apply just from, from nowhere because mm-hmm. um, the team the team themselves will recognise what makes a good team member. Yeah. And they'll email me or say or phone me and say, Hazel, I worked with so-and-so at the weekend. They were really good and might be worth considering. 
mm-hmm. and then um so uh, you know and then i might approach them i'll find out where they live in the area and if we're if sort of we need team in that area in particular i might give them a call and ask them if they'd like to come along and just observe how we work because it's not for everybody mm. at all penny you know a guest to a team member is a completely different experience we're yeah. not ghost hunters when we go do these events at all mm. we're facilitators mm. so you're not really ghost hunting as team members you're literally ex- um, sort of facilitating an experience for somebody else to do it so people will think oh yeah i'll be able to go ghost hunting every saturday and i'm going to this place and that place actually they won't be ghost hunting in that place they'll be in one area for the whole night and mm. that's where they'll be and that is probably not what they expect so mm. it takes a lot to make that transition from being a guest to a to a team member and i really appreciate that so it's not for everybody people Mm. do come and they think nah it's not for me at all they don't Mm. want to be stuck in one place all night and doing one sort of particular experiment all night and i really understand that so the team but if they do enjoy that then they can get there early and have a bit Mm. of time for themselves and do you know what i mean there's opportunities for them to go off and do their own thing during a break sometimes and that sort of thing so you know you could go to say warwick castle and you could well perhaps not warwick castle because the free time is changing there but anywhere really any Mm. any historic place you might want to go to dover castle you can go and wander around there if you get there early and do your own little vigils and things where else would you ever get that before you know your guests turned up yeah that would be amazing that would be amazing to do that at dover i must admit Uh, and, and you're right because I, I worked as a with an event company and and it just wasn't for me it, it, mm. it just wasn't for me but it, it's it's um it, I, I do sometimes find when I uh, because so many of the groups like like you guys and everything else will allow me to come on investigations and know that I know kind of what I'm doing so oh. occasionally I can go off on my own and mm-hmm. do my own thing yeah we but have I do them. sometimes have members of the public have sussed out that I might be doing something that they're interested in because they yeah. maybe want to learn more about so you know follow, so, you so, <laughs> follow me around yeah so what is singapore theory and 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 why are you playing that music right now what's the goal mm-hmm. for that and yeah well, and um, they're um, hyper sensitive on they're hyper alert on these events the guests are everything mm. everybody's doing they want to know about i yeah. mean a lot of them want to make sure that we're not doing anything to fake anything so mm. we can't have one person doing something on their own do you know what i mean mm. because that that sort of sets you up for well that person was left on his own could have done anything Mm. but what we do is we if we have people like yourself on our events or um paranormal groups for example Mm. um that can't afford to spend the x thousand pounds on a location so they join us at cost and then they are put into their own group and they Mm. just work by themselves but they work around the areas that we're in yeah so they all get the same experience but they're not having to um be led by us we you know be like teaching grandmother to suck eggs to be honest you know they're probably better than us at some some of the stuff so um it does work but with um with with guests like yourself we tend to allow returning guests in particular or people that have done lots of events with us we do give them quite a bit of leeway Mm. and give them an area where we know as long as we know where they are and they're in that area we don't mind yeah yeah i also find when i do investigations that somebody will turn around and say so what what's the history behind here penny and I'm like, no, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> no, oh. no, no, when was this place built, Penny? Oh, oh right. God. Yes. Okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. But, you know, um, if I But can... you've got a real passion for history, haven't yes. you? I mean, yeah. you, you absolutely eat, live and breathe it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, and, and, and that's really... A lot of people that come to the events, sometimes they're not coming to ghost hunt, you know. They come in because they want to be in the building. They just want to be them. there. Yeah, that's why yeah. I do a lot of So them. to yeah. have someone like you that knows all the history is probably, you know, yeah. if we took you to Dover, it'd be fan- fantastic. But then I suppose we do have Dover guides as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, my history, speciality so. at Dover is the World War Two part. Not so much yeah, the main so we're not allowed part. in there. Yeah. Well, we, I say we're not allowed. We choose not to because of the relatives that are still living. You yeah. know, it's still it's still very very um, live, isn't it? In a mm. sense, but yeah, we do so, the medieval tunnels, which yeah. are quite good. Yeah. See, that's not my speciality. I mean, I can learn it, and I'll probably know mm. more than somebody who's never read about it would, because I've read so much. But no, my speciality at Dover is the well, it's the World War One and the World War Two usage. Have you have you been to the World War Two tunnels in New Brighton? Not yet. 
Not oh, you yet. need that's to come there with this one, one night. Lives. Yeah, well, but that's when like you, a five-hour drive. Four and a half yeah, hour yeah, drive but as it's well. brilliant, brilliant little yeah. location that is. I think we're there next week actually. Yeah, no, that's another one that's on my my wish list mm, to do because it's all the stuff that sort of appeals. But they've got they've got all the stuff in there. They've got all the equipment and stuff, mm. loads of equipment in there, and Calverton Hatch as well, Calverton Bunker. I've done Calverton that's Hatch. really good. Well, that's that's yeah. only fifteen minutes up the road for me. Yeah, see, have you done that one? Yeah. Yeah, so... I mentioned yeah, that one I in my book, actually. I've, I've left 25 minutes before I mentioned my book. Yeah, I mentioned Kelvin. I, I wrote a chapter yeah, about Kelvin Hatch in my book. Mm. You did, actually. I just realised. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a brilliant place, though, isn't it? It's amazing. I'm waiting for my boys. Will's probably old enough now, my older son, um, to take mm. them there, because the, 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 we're going to talk about your new venture in a minute, because that's what people mm-hmm. are tuning in to listen to. But I remember when, I think my husband and I it was my birthday we'd been together a few years at this point and he was like what do you want to do and I said tell you what because my birthday's July I was hoping to have nice weather there's some lovely outdoor areas at Kelvin and Hatch I said I've really mm-hmm. ever since I moved to Essex in my early 20s I wanted to go to the secret nuclear bunker never got around to doing it so I said why don't we do that for my birthday we'll take a picnic we can sit outside and eat a picnic well, of course the day we go it's chucking it down like mm. you know coats and jumpers chucking yeah. it down but so we unfortunately Kelvin and Hatch being underground it didn't really matter too much but we both had a weird experience in there we both smelled oh, wow. burning like rubber burning whereabouts um, were you I want to say in the engine room right if I remember rightly um, where the big thick door is the the lock the the massive thick door no no the actual right. engine room that would have had all the pumps going to to oh, purify right, yeah. the air and all that stuff but we were in we were in there and we both smelt it and and we were like nothing's running we but we could both because sm- i t- i remember i turned around to him and said can you smell that and he said it smells like rubber burning but when i spoke to someone else who investigates there a lot a few years later they said yeah that smell follows you people report it in different mm-hmm. parts of the bunker that smell and there's Weird. no and and apparently they've done investigate. They don't know why people report that because even though officially the equipment does still work, it shouldn't smell yeah. of burning rubber. I'll ask um, I'll ask my team if they've ever had that that as well that experience because there there's a particular team that there are a lot actually. So mm. I can ask them. I know I did speak to someone who you, was going there every couple of months, and they said yeah that's been reported more than once to us. Mm. Um, I actually like it in Kelvin. I don't find Kelvin Hatch intimidating at all. I quite like no, it. I, I, find it. I went there once, one night, and we threw, in fact, Katrina, who's in the chat, we had, mm. I took her daughter, Emily, and uh, we were doing it with some of the X Factor contestants. Oh, right. And we went in there, and we were we threw a ball, uh, one of these, and it landed on a bed on one of the bunks. And then five seconds later, it came off the bunk and came back into the room i mean it was nice. just extraordinary so but you can't recreate it can you so no. once you've seen it it's like oh no <laughs> did that really just happen no i like i like helden hatch i must admit but i like it say from the history point of view as well because the cold war era doesn't get sort of spoken about that much because it's still no. in living memory for most yeah. of us um, yeah it is anyone over the age of sort of 40 40 45 remembers it all um I mean, my parents will tell me what was happening when the Cuban Missile Crisis was going on. They can remember that, you know, quite vividly. It was a very so, scary time for everybody, wasn't yeah, it? Terrifying. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a fascinating place, and uh, yeah, it's one that I do. I just like going to. But the thing is, because of the fact it's underground, you can go during the day, and you've yeah. still not got the noise. You've not got noise pollution. You've not got light contamination. You've not got. And it's it is a fascinating place. But with someone as busy as you are. Mm-hmm. Why on earth did you decide to come up with a new concept? <laughs> well, mainly because, um, see, what happened was we got invited a couple of years ago to do some ghost walks in London over Halloween for one of the London councils, Midtown it was. Mm-hmm. They wanted to promote their, their borough and they wanted to do something, you know, that was sort of fun. So they asked us if we'd come and do set up a tour, a route, um, around Midtown and then um, just do a ghost walk and I thought well, that's going to be a bit boring and, and we really don't you know it's not our expertise to be ghost walkers mm. our expertise is ghost hunting in locations and things like that so you know or facilitating so we sort of spoke about it a bit more and then um, and I said to them well what I'd like to do is to do these um, interactive ones where we let your let the guests 
take part in an experiment on the ghost walk itself so we organized it all worked it all out how it would work it took a bit of planning because we'd never done it before we'd never heard it being done before and then um we decided to put it into action so we did a whole whole i think it was five days five nights or something the first one we did was one night it was just one night yeah and uh, it was massive and we started off in one of these um you know these little parks in london these central parks and did yeah. start the vigil there we took a ghost tour guide with us um two tour guides we, we employed to do it who to be fair they didn't really enhance the experience that much and i'm not being rude it was just difficult mm. um and it didn't marry up quite well with what we were doing it became a bit confusing so we went away back to the drawing board thought about it and decided not to use um clo- you know in the in the top hat and tails and all this sort of stuff we didn't want all that this is new and, and more innovative than mm-hmm. than the spooky feel so we decided to um, take somebody that was just really like yourself, who's really good on the history and of, of the particular area that we were stopping at. Mm-hmm. Um, someone mo- modern that was not in garb and things like that in the clothing. And it absolutely worked like a dream. And we did a whole night. I think we did five nights in total. Mm-hmm. Team from all over the country going down there um, every night at five o'clock till ten o'clock running these ghost tours around the city of london with all these experiments we started off with so we'd start off with the first tour being 25 to 30 guests by the time we got to the pub which was our last place to, where we did investigate indoors as the final area um with about 60 people each time <laughs> just people following us around yeah. it was it was it was amazing so i mean we did that we did um probably I don't know, 30 tours in those five days. And then we did it again for Kingston-upon-Thames. Last year we did um, four or five tours a night doing the same sort of thing with the equipment. Um, I was actually the historian on that night, um, which was quite bizarre, really, because it's not my forte at all. But it was it was quite good. To, I learned more from the guests as we were going round to give to the next tour. Do you know what I mean? Fabulous, so, isn't like, it? When that happens, yeah. Yeah. So I was able to be by the by the final tour of the whole of the whole week. I was absolutely a historian for Kingston upon Thames. <laughs> I knew everything <laughs> there was to know. But um, and it just works. People were fascinated by what we were doing. Yeah. And it made me realise that, yeah, we have people that want to do the overnight ghost hunts. They really like doing those. Um, but then there are people that don't want to stay up all night. They don't want the intensity of an overnight ghost hunt. They just want to do a ghost walk. But they, they, they don't want to listen all the time. They don't want to stand there listening. They actually want to ask questions and things. But there isn't really a lot of opportunity to do that on ghost walks. Mm. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever done a normal ghost walk where you're with 30 people and you're not going to be able to say oh was jack the ripper you know did, did, did this happen here and did that you can't ask those real questions can you not officially but this is me we're talking about i'm the one that'll go up to the front with the guide and say you know what you were just saying back yeah then? <laughs> but you know most people sort of stand there quite they just follow and don't yeah know. Yeah, just yeah follow. so this is an opportunity for them to um go into a small group of you know so you're not in a group of 30 to 40 anymore you're now in a group of eight you're doing an experiment you're give your you're finding information out about the area that you're in and you're actually interacting with what ghosts and spirits might be there if there are there you've got that opportunity Mm -hmm. the chances of that happening are quite minimal you'd think but actually they work really well and the glass does move and the ouija board does move you know you don't obviously it's all up for supposition if people's hands are on it but Mm. you know they do dousing experiments they do all sorts of things and they absolutely love it so a sorry sorry i was gonna say speed (laughs) speed ghosting yeah it is like that really like that i mean they're all split into teams at the beginning um so they know exactly when we say teams they all know where they've got to stand who they're standing with they've all got badges on they know what they're doing so we get all that organized at at, at the start and so it's really slick as it goes forward no one's got to stand and say what team am i in where have i got to stand it's all done at the very beginning and then we started introducing them onto events as well so prior to an event say for newark castle prior to newark castle ghost hunt we do newark castle ghost walk Mm -hmm. so people could just come and do the ghost walk within the grounds of newark castle and then leave at the end of it so it'd be an hour's ghost walk doing Mm -hmm. experiments like speed ghost hunting i suppose 
so that's something that we've decided we're going to so we, it's almost like offering another type of experience altogether mm. so people that don't want to not be able to drink for the night you know wear the flat shoes and the, and the thick coats and all the rest of it and everything you've got to do on your ghost hunt they just want to go out and have a ghost tour and then go off out for the night yeah. and learn a bit about ghost hunting and it's a lot cheaper for them as well because obviously it's not going to be as expensive because we're not really hiring locations we do go to a pub at the end where they can have a drink and you know ask any more questions that they want to and then um, try and sell sell you know the ghost hunts as well yeah. so it's obviously a time to upsell as well yeah. so that's what we're going to be doing but we're going to be doing it all over the country wow. so we've developed a website called city ghost tours um which will be out in november uh-huh. and after halloween and then we're going to be um setting up these tours well we've got a, a really good you know simon and whistle don't I you i know simon i know lovely simon yeah, yeah. so simon um will be doing a doing it with us at Pendle um, and in York um, and then we'll be doing you know all the other places London Birmingham Newark Lincoln Nottingham all those other places that do it the only problem I do have is one that I'm addressing which is why it's taken such a long time is contacting those that are doing ghost tours at the moment yeah. because if you start stepping on people's toes it's a bit like ice cream van wars you know yeah. you're setting yourself up for a massive fall so we've been getting in touch with all those people that do their own ghost walks to make sure a we're not treading on their toes and being in their areas and and b if they want to join it with us you know it's an opportunity for them as well you know mm. we could, our timings could be worked out so they get another opportunity to and that enhances it for us because we're doing it with their blessing and, mm. and it's it's a lot more you know they've got more tips and things that we don't know about yeah. They've also got the history knowledge, a lot of the ghosts, once you do the ghost walks, because a lot of the ghost walks, as you say, it's not, as I've just put it, speed ghosting. It is like, you know, this is what happened here. And the it's, it's like I did the one in York years yeah, ago. Yeah, the York one's brilliant. It, isn't it? And we were in the area of Bedden. And yeah. the guy was sort of saying, you know, where we're standing right now is the area of Bedden. And he was telling about the um, the old school it come children's workhouse that was there and the children who were meant to have been murdered by the... And the fact that you can... So you've got the history side of it, which I now know, sort of 20 years on, is correct, because I know about it. Yeah. Not saying that it wasn't, but I now know no, that he's not making yeah. it up to make sort of tell a story. But then also about the fact that the, the, the ghosts, sort of the, the spirits that are meant to be people here, children late at night laughing and joking and running around. And and, and so you've, you have got a, a bit of both. And I, I think, you know, for, for someone who maybe doesn't want to spend five, six hours of their nights sort of in a building doing it, but wants to learn a bit about a city um, and wants to have a go at what's it like doing a spirit board or what's it like using dowsing rods or what's it like... Yeah, it sounds like a really good taster and they can either go off on the history route if that's what they subsequently yeah. want to do or they go off on the ghost, the investigating and, and, route. I mean, there's some things that we use like, I mean, at dowsing rods, what, what are they? They're the two bits of metal but I'll mm. tell you what, I've never seen so much surprise on people's faces when they, when they, for, they the, 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 the look on their faces is absolutely priceless yeah. as is when a glass moves. You know, yep. you, 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 you've you can't ever imagine that a glass could move so quickly in the middle of a street but actually you know like i say it's up for supposition but you know when it does they all look so shocked and and like you know you can see them walking away questioning it all and looking under the table for magnets and all that sort of stuff because they can't believe that they've just taken part in something so quickly that's made them think oh god i wonder if that bit was haunted or <laughs> wonder if there was something there they just you know and, and we're all in the same boat really i mean people talk about experts there aren't really any experts no, are there any. because no. you know unless i've died and come back and not realize i don't don't think I. there's am. people with experience <laughs> absolutely but you can't have an expert in something that you no. can't prove it's right or wrong and the the experience is so important because the experience allows you to provide conditions to find out doesn't Mm. it you know that's what experience does it allows you to 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 set set conditions that allow people to at least have a good experience rather than you know not mistake noises for anything else because you've controlled it enough that people are quiet and things like that 
Mm. So yeah, I mean, and it is real, and it's fun as well. It's such fun doing that because mm. it's so quick, and the time just absolutely flies. I mean, if Katrina's still in this chat room, she will remember vividly her and another team member, Lisa, going to London for the night to do this. You know, the, the adventures that we have doing all this sort of stuff is is mm. really funny. You know, I mean, we travel far and wide, and we we laugh so much doing it because. I can't even tell you all the adventures we've had. They're just phenomenal, you know. What goes on tour stays on tour. Exactly. I mean, we do so much. <laughs> we've, we've done so much. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The people we've met, the places we've been. You know, if I hadn't started this company, I'd never have those memories. And some of them are absolutely fantastic with people that I love. Mm. So, all right, I'm going to go serious now for a second. Okay. How do you keep your guests safe? You're wandering around parts of London, parts of Birmingham whatever that might not be the nicest of areas uh well we don't go down back streets at all right. so we're not going to go down the local back street and you know do stuff it's all done under um street lamps and it's all because d- we need it for the lights you know we, we're not we, we don't sort of shine torch we when we went to kingston upon thames there was um a dustbin lorry suddenly mm-hmm. turned up caused so much noise that we had to move and actually you're dead right what you're saying penny because we moved to an area a bit further around the corner that became a bit more um solitude mm. and i didn't feel safe so we didn't stay very long do you know mm. what i mean and it was that feeling but there is a knowledge of safety you know each each group of people has got a team member with them and plus you've got your tour guys you've got extra people on there anyway right. so if anything remotely looks dodgy if you've got some drunks coming up with whatever you just move on you mm. know it's as simple as that move on don't okay. even try and engage or entertain what's going on just move on because i know there's parts of say colchester for example i mean colchester mm-hmm. oh yeah you know, oldest, yeah. oldest city, no. recorded city and all <laughs> yeah. that thing but there's certain parts of there that you yeah, it's probably very, very lively isn't it <laughs> yeah, that's one way of putting it and i know a group recently uh, uh, i won't say the place they were at but they did get oh, yeah, assaulted by some drunks yeah i know outside I know. i've heard about it um and that was just one of the things i was wondering i mean i, I must admit when i did i'd done the jack the ripper walk and mm. the two hours of that went by like 20 minutes it was amazing um, and the, the guides that are on those are mind blowing. Their knowledge yeah. is, is absolutely mind blowing. Um, but there were certain pa- I did say to him a few times, "Are we safe in these parts of you know we're in parts of East London that even even my husband who's worked in them is a bit like mm. Mm, not sure we should be down here after dark." And he's like, "No, we're fine. Promise, we're yeah, fine." I mean, one, things we won't be doing. We won't be doing things like the Jack the Ripper tour. That's mm, not no, what course. this is about. Well, we're not no going to be doing particular no tours. <laughs> yeah, and also I've got a very good friend who does um, a lot of stuff down there. Anyway, Laura Goff. Mm. She does a lot of Jack the Ripper stuff, and she's brilliant at what she does. Mm. So yeah, no, I um, our our intention is to do it a bit like within the cities themselves. You mm-hmm. know, the, so you walk through routes, and each each stop on the route's got some haunting history. Mm. And then you stop at that particular location. So you've only probably got about five or six stops throughout the whole route and then end up in the pub and then go off and pick your next guests up mm. and do that three or four times over a night. So, yeah, it does work out. And it has, I mean, I've, we've never had any problems. Mm. But you talk about safety. I mean, I don't know if you want me to talk about this or not, but, I mean, we were in the middle of the um, terrorist attack at Boma Market, you know, that's yes, probably the me, yeah. worst ever that you could possibly imagine to mm. be you know stuck in the middle of and you know that you'd never know what's going to happen you have no, no. idea no you, you you mitigate as much as possible as you can but you just yeah as you say you never i do remember you telling me actually i didn't know until recently when you told me that yeah. you had a group where were they investigating when they, got they were caught? in the clink prison which that's is it. right next door to the yeah. um to where they went the the terrorists went upstairs above mm. them and they could hear them running around i mean it was terrifying oh, that would have been so absolutely. you know so you'd like what i'm trying to say is that you don't know what's around the corner for anything no. you, know, no. you really don't and so you have to just try and keep yourself as safe as you safe as you can but don't ever let it stop you doing what you want to do i actually nearly gave up haunted happenings the day after that happened wow. you know because there was an element i mean it was very sort of um self-absorbed self-absorbed on my part 
but I did feel like that. I felt very sort of self-absorbed that I'd actually put these people in the middle of this predicament, mm. you know, and it was all my fault, but actually I hadn't at all, you know, this thing happened. And, hey, um, I worked you know. in London when 7-7 seven, seven happened. Mm. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> yeah. I, unfortunately, yeah, luckily just... I wasn't on any of the tubes, but I had a client travelling in to meet me who was on one of them and I couldn't get hold of. So, oh, I, you gosh. know, it's, it, it, yeah, I can understand that whole sort of feeling of guilt. But as you say, you can't stop everything. But do you have like the routes that you, you use? Are they almost preset routes? So if something did happen yeah. to a group, someone else yeah. would know where that group was meant to be at that Absolutely, point in time. Yeah. So we, in timing wise, we'd know exactly where you know there's there's like red dots on the route so you know and they've got to be done we've only got five minutes in each area so mm-hmm. we'll be on that one it's five minutes walk to that one so it's all timed out to finish at a particular time right. so that basically as well so we can go and pick the next group up on time right. so yeah there's no room for um you know for sort of people to to sort of dilly around and things like that but yeah. you can only go with your slowest walker yeah so we've we've done it for the slowest walker which gives us a bit more time to be yeah. fair I know one of the locations you told me you were going to be setting them up is actually Newark. Yeah. Um, and Brilliant people, place. Well, you see, people listening probably don't realise how amazing Newark is. And I didn't realise until I went there recently how amazing. And the history. I know mm. I'm using the word history again. And I know this isn't haunted histories. But <laughs> Lady Godiva was from oh, Newark. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Newark has just. Have you been into? Have you been through Newark Castle? Have you have you done the Newark Castle? We did. Yeah, we did do the castle. Did you see? I put the photo. Oh yes, up. I, yeah, I, I yeah, got I on the other side of the the, the river of the, yeah. the train. No, I did see it. And of the castle wall and stuff. I I must admit, the only thing we couldn't find the Civil War Museum. I did go looking for it, and the mm. the boys were getting a bit like, Ugh! and I did go looking for it. I couldn't find the darn thing. So next time I come up, I've got to find it. But, yeah, definitely. But yeah, the I mean, castle was beautiful. There was actually a wedding going on, so we didn't we didn't want to get in the way of their photos and things. But um, <laughs> hello, uh, yeah. Um, but I I was I was I, I would have liked to have seen a bit more something up about the history, a bit more of the castle, rather than googling it on my phone, like yeah. I was doing when I was there. Um, but inside some of the rooms, I mean, the, some of the areas there, I mean, they're just, when you're in those areas, I won't spoil it for you, but when you go, you'll understand, you, you just feel like you're actually part of the history, just mm. by being in the areas. Really great place. Oh, I, I did feel a, like I did that some with filming there with Barry John, actually. Oh, did you? And, with our yeah, bass? Yeah, we went, down, we went over there and did a bit of filming. Somebody was filming Barry, actually. It was just, just because I'd done the introductions that I went along, but... Yeah, and he and it was really it was really good as well. He did really well. Mm. Oh, we love Barry. We love Barry. He's yes, gonna I he's do. gonna be on Haunted Histories in Yeah, he's a lovely man. October. We're gonna be talking about Coombe Abbey in October. Oh, brilliant place. Isn't it just? Isn't yeah. it just? Uh, fascinating history to that one as well blew my mind when I did the wrote a little blog on that I like my mind being blown on these places because when I start reading they go oh my god I've heard of the bloody hell you know and you start reading it through it's fabulous but yes Newark is a lot more quaint and picturesque than I thought it would be if I'm yeah, completely I, honest I, it is and I understand what you mean by that when you hear Newark and when mm. you see Newark there's two different things mm. isn't it yeah, you think we, of Newark as just being it. on the edge of Nottingham, really, and that's mm. as far as it goes. But actually, it's it's its own little world, it and is. it's it is. A fantastic place. Lisa, who does my Newark Castle events there a lot, she absolutely loves it. She mm. loves going. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely one. I said to to the husband, we're going to have to come back and explore properly. But I really wanted to go to the Civil War Museum, but so I just couldn't find it, and the boys were getting bored, and um, it was it was like. Okay, I'll come well, back again. Newark, Newark Castle's been taken over by um, um, a trust or, or I can't remember who it is actually at the moment. But anyway, it's, it's, it's been taken over and I'm going down to meet them in a couple of weeks mm. um, to do some more locations there and also to set up these ghost walks. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it'd be, um, it'd be, if, you, if you do get time, you could come with me. Don't say that. Okay. <laughs> 
Wayne can't hear, but he might get. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. It was. I just found it a really. It, it, say, I mean, I love a good museum. And then when mm. I found the links to the Civil War and all the all that stuff, and and I was even given some of the facts to 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 my husband. And I was sat, and I, there's a one of the parks we walk through. There's this amazing like. I think it's meant to be like a, a sundial, but it's in the grass, and on each yeah. marker it's got a fact about Newark, and and it was just like if you look down or look up, the stuff you learn that you've mm. you've heard about as rumours and things like Lady Godiva, yeah, and it's like oh my gosh, I'm actually walking where Lady Godiva walked almost, and it's I love I it. I know it's like you, you, it. you're treading into it's like when you touch something that, that somebody touched. 300 years ago yeah. you know it's just that feeling isn't it yeah. I mean a lot of the other walks we're doing we're doing the Pendle ones as well with Simon and you know I'm really looking forward to those because he's absolutely he's amazing he's he amazing. absolutely lives eats and breathes the Pendle witches mm. and so f- to be doing it with him is fantastic you know we don't need we don't need anything else really no. because people will just be I think the experiments might even get in the way because he's you, so he good just absorbs at what he does. you doesn't he, he you just yeah I know when I've had him on my show and he starts storytelling and I'm thinking, actually, I'm meant to be asking questions here, but I actually just want to sit and listen. And no, sometimes like, after 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, <laughs> shoot, I'm supposed we've to just, ask you something. Um, <laughs> we've just we've just done the Pendle Witch Weekend this weekend. So he's been working with us this weekend and a team down there. We've done a, a, three, a two, two-nighter um, staying at the hotel and he does the tour with us on the Saturday and the Saturday night at the hill. Mm. So yeah, he's a fantastic man. He's a lovely man. Yeah, Vicky has just said his stories are hypnotic. Yeah, yeah. they are. They yeah, are. definitely. Trouble is, you're, you're managing guests and you forget you're managing the guests yes. and you've got time to so You're like, oops. Same with <laughs> oh, doing a radio now show. Gone by. Yeah. I forget I'm presenting a radio show. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, not a lot shuts me up, but um, <laughs> when I'm listening to Simon, it does. So, how do you choose the places you're going to be doing these these ghost walks in? And are you, ha- if people have got ideas of places, are you happy to hear about them? absolutely i mean there's so many places so many that thousands aren't there that we could we could look at mm. but we've got to be realistic in what we can manage so we're going to do the ones like pendle and york definitely because mm. we know that we've got a great history and we've got we've got somebody that can bring it alive as oh, well yeah. as do the experiments and then in london we've we've got somebody in london as well um, we've got somebody in Kingston, which Kingston was really popular, and it's a beautiful little place. I'm not saying if you've ever been there. It. I have, but I'd never think of it as. No, no, you just wouldn't, would you? But actually, you go there, and it's got so much history. But every place you go to, everywhere you go, I mean, you've got Bosworth, you've got you've got so many yeah. places, um, and it's got to be something. It's got. It's obviously we've got to sell them, mm. so it's got to have something that's tangible for people to want to go and also it's got to have a footfall so mm. you know you've got to have people that would be out at that time of night anyway doing certain things we don't it will all be pre-booked nobody will be able to book on the night yeah. um, and just turn up and book you know people that followed us around last time we'd have to manage that a little bit better because you know it's so easy for people to just tag along and you know you've got to have quite a lot of kahulas to turn around and say you know clear off yeah it's not easy could, no no you could just say can you pay and stay but it's probably the best way of doing it to be fair um but yeah so it, and all the tickets will go out pre we might do pre ghost walks to events so we could do warwick for example pre the warwick castle event mm. um stratford pre the full staffs event so it, it, it can work like that really easily so you do your it could be on the same night that you're running your ghost hunt event and it all ties in together because mm. you can start off at those areas as well okay so yeah it, it will work well i think it'll be really um i think it'd be really slick once it's all yeah. going it's got to go for it's you know it's got to have bedding in time but we've done it the team are brilliant they know exactly what they're doing and um, as long as we've got the locations right i think it will work really well wow it sounds fascinating sounds absolutely fascinating it's a little bit different and it's i mean people have been doing ghost walks for Mm. so long haven't they Mm. and they're so good at them and Mm. it's it's not to be compared with that Mm. you know because this is completely different and those people are experts in their own field of what they do (coughs) and you know we're good at what we do so it is we can marry it up in some way it'd be brilliant speed ghosting yeah i'm I'm actually thinking of calling it that but uh, feel free 
Yeah, free. I don't know what people will think of it. Speed, Speed ghosting. ghosting. What's that? Mm. I'll get That's a date a at point. the end of this. It's a new thing. It's a new Casper. thing. <laughs> Yeah, What's speed your ghosting. Name? Casper. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, actually, it's really good. I like that. I like that name. Well, it's, it's just so, it, to, it to me. It just it says what it is. It's it's ghost hunting, but fast speed yeah, ghosting. I really like it. I think I might be using that. <laughs> I'm going to start copywriting these things tomorrow. I give you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start copywriting it as intellectual property yeah, no, or something. No, I do, I do actually like it, cause speed ghosting. Yeah, I do like it. It sounds really interesting, doesn't it? Well, you do realise you're going to have to give all your team, look, if someone calls Pen- Penny Griffiths Morgan turns up on the night, she is allowed to just follow you around. Yeah, she's allowed to follow you around because she came up with the name speed ghosting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, we, we've had a, a few points in, in the chat room, but one's come from Pamela, spooky sister. And I'm going to mm-hmm. ask her question because she just said that my Kumabi bog was brilliant. So I will well. ask her question because she said that. <laughs> well done, Pam. Um, or someone else has just pulled it ghost speeding. Well, oh, yeah. that's another no. one, but it could sound like ghost... And, and Vicky's just said with pleasure I can turn up. So that's nice. Um, ghost speeding. Sounds like ghosts on drugs yeah actually i do yeah yeah go sorry speeding. katrina that's what but it sounds probably, like to me <laughs> is that what katrina's put yeah <laughs> oh she's brilliant though katrina is i mean if she was to send in her list of ideas she she's she comes up with lists of ideas and they are so good all the time just... so do i but i just don't give you half of them <laughs> <laughs> but yes pamela's question pamela's question newsham any news mm-hmm. on it reopening okay so newsham was we thought would be opened by um, sort of end of August. That was when we thought it was going to be opened and we had our expected date. But then the owner, um, our lovely John, has gone away and won't be back until the end of October. Right. So we can't do anything till he comes back because obviously he's going to be the one that then tells us it's all done and we can go back in. So we're hoping for Halloween and if it if it's if he's back for Halloween and it's open, we'll literally do tickets on a day at Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think personally it's going to be until November that we're back in. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, we've got a database of over sort of 6,000 people waiting to come to Newsham. You know, we've got, mm. it, it's massive. It's another and one on my to do list. Mm. Yeah, well, it's the most fantastic place, honestly. Mm. You know, it's if Jeff is still on the chat, she. Yeah. One of the first shows I did interview Phil. Oh right, yeah. It was Phil I interviewed for that when you put me in touch with him. Mm. Yeah, no, he's and he's lovely, isn't he, Phil? Mm, We love Phil. Yeah, he's a really good guy. So yeah, I mean, I think Jess from Dust Till Dawn and myself have been waiting so patiently, along with all our guests, to get back in there. We know it's going to happen. It's just Mm. when it happens, and it's got to be right. You know, I'm not taking, and neither will Jess take anybody in that building which isn't what if it's not safe yeah sure. you know if it's not right we can't do it can't risk it can you no um, your team's all. ganging up on us their favorite okay. name is ghost on the go ghost on the go oh quite like that one as well ghost on I'm the just go thinking, a what form will of catch, speed what ghosting would catch my eye if i was scrolling through if i was scrolling through something and i saw speed ghosting i'd be thinking i wonder what the hell that is mm. Mm. well there you go yeah see what you mean about it, but they're Ghost ganging on up on us they're all saying they yeah. like that one and I'm like thanks guys you're listening to my podcast yeah. and you don't like my idea cheers for that I'm on your side <laughs> <laughs> well that's, ne- that's an hour love is it's that an gone an hour it's you an are hour. kidding me I'm not oh my kidding goodness. you oh wow I can't believe it so I for the person, can't believe it. We, were, we were talking about when if somebody gives you a bad review and all that kind mm-hmm. of thing. The person on YouTube who said I was a rubbish presenter oh. in your face. Oh my word! <laughs> it's only the, the one he had one ever say that, but yes, he said I was a rubbish presenter. Who said that tonight? No, no, not oh. tonight. Oh, God, oh no. I remember you telling me. Yeah, I remember you telling me about it actually. And do you know what though? You could have ten thousand compliments and one bad review. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't remember the ten thousand compliments, do no. you? It's just that no. one bad review. See, that, that's what our evil queen Kerry will say to me all the time. Oh, Sarah yeah. Jane just said I'm a fab presenter. Thank you, thank Aww. you. I appreciate that. Yeah, well no, done, it, was, it was actually a show I actually really enjoyed doing. It was on Boleskine House with Ashley Mortimer 
and yeah. uh, I, and I was sharing it because the house had gone up in flames again or something and I went on to YouTube oh look there's a comment somebody put yeah shame shame about the uh, something like the rubbish presenter or something like that I was thinking how oh, rude no. oh, how that's rude. horrible isn't it but why what, do people have to do it it's I like... don't know the, oh the other one I had was I think it was Sarah Chimacero I interviewed and somebody on her page not realising obviously I'm friends with her put something about uh, the presenter does like the sound of her own voice so I did actually reply back it is her show yes um. exactly exactly <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Ross didn't get where he was today, did he, by being quiet? <laughs> Neither did his brother. Exactly. <laughs> no? I know. I know. It's uh, People don't always realise the reason that the presenter talks a lot is sometimes because they've got a guest who is going quiet on them. Yeah. And they have to talk so there's not dead air. Yeah, and also it's you get engrossed, don't you? And you've got so much you want to ask and mm. say and do. So, yeah, I mean, I don't even feel like it's been presented. I just feel like I've had a really nice chat for an hour. So thanks Thank ever you. so much. That's <laughs> my goal. That is my goal. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you all. Thank you okay. so much for your time tonight, Hazel. It's been a my pleasure. honking Absolute show. And pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone who's come into the chat room and said some lovely things about, well, about me. You know, my ego is just, you know... Good. <laughs> well, let's get rid of that one on YouTube, can't we? <laughs> put those put those in its place. No, you've been brilliant. Thank you so much, Penny. That's really appreciate it. My ego is about as big as well, my height really, which isn't a lot. Um <laughs> <laughs> It's a good job mine isn't there because I'm, I'm really tall. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't I'm about five foot two. I'm not very tall. <laughs> um, but it's it's been great fun. Thank you so much for sharing the new idea with us. Do stay on the on, li- on the line though, because I have got a city for you that might be an interesting one, and I'm going to sell Ooh. it into you as to why you might find it an interesting one. But I'm not going to say okay. it on air because okay. um, you might Somebody not like my idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, might not like my idea. Someone might nick it. <laughs> I, I, I will wanna, like. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that. I just didn't want you to yeah. go. No, I don't like that one. And I'll be like, no, I don't <laughs> like my idea. <laughs> right. Anyone who's enjoyed listening to me talk. I'm going to do a plug for my own show now. On a Wednesday at nine o'clock, you get Haunted Histories, where I talk about the history and I talk about the paranormal of places, normally with a guest who knows a lot about the paranormal. You've listened to my show before, haven't you, Hazel? Yeah, twice. Yeah. Three times, actually. Cool. And I know I've had... Phil's been on it a few times as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Julie... Was it Julie was on it talking about Nottingham? Yeah, yeah. Julie Hasseltine, yeah. yeah. She so, was, she's brilliant as well. She's, she's lovely. lovely lady. I love those pieces. Um... But this week I'm going to be talking to Jane Harris about some places in Edinburgh. Oh, wow. Mm. Yes, the Jane Harris. Someone who's um, as good as history, as, as into history, shall I say, as I am. So it's, either going to, it's going to either bore everyone else to tears or be a really good show. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep an eye on YouTube. <laughs> keep an eye on YouTube, yeah. But yeah, so that's on this Wednesday. So if you have liked what you've heard, or well, the sort of thing I come out with, anyway, that's where my show is. But we do have shows on every night of the week. And in fact, on a Tuesday, we have two shows. We have 8 o'clock with the lovely Mr. Neil Packer. And then at 9 o'clock with um, my boss, well, I suppose the other, my two bosses, Paul and Kerry. And then on a Thursday, you have the PSH radio show. On a Friday, you have the Dark Mirror show. And on a Monday, you have the lovely Jolene on the Parallel para, para Prism show. Um, talking all things spiritual and mediumistic so it's a bit mm. bit for everyone yeah it's a bit for everyone but on that note thank you all for listening I'm going to do my normal haunted history sign out because that's how I sign out the shows have a good evening sleep tight and don't worry too much about things that go bump in the night thank you for listening don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week find us on Facebook Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.